Hi everyone, we're back for chapter 11, A Super Proud Mrs. Murthy. When they were both alone in the study at last, there was a long silence. Banda was suddenly embarrassed about his fame in front of Mrs. Murthy. It was she who finally spoke. Bando, she said gently, why didn't you tell me about all of this? Bando took a long time answering. He'd forgotten exactly why he'd been so secretive about his other life to begin with. He tried to tell the old lady that initially he hadn't wanted to worry her about money matters. That's how it had started. There wasn't enough money to run the household, right? Any mention of him trying to earn some extra cash would have only upset her. So one secret had led to another and since Bando only wanted the money and none of the fame that went with being a popular cartoonist, it had seemed simpler to rem remain silent about it all. Mrs. Murthy sighed and leaned over the side of the sofa to stroke Bando's ears like that, you know, like. Muffin's not here, she's gone out. So I've got no ears to stroke. Mrs. Murthy said, Oh, my Bando Baba, you've always made me feel so proud of you. And now this, my Baba is Bangalore's most talented cartoonist. Bando let out a sound of pure satisfaction that almost sounded like a cat purring. So nice to have your ears scratched and uh, hear lovely praise coming from your favorite person in the world. Here he was, snuggled up against the feet of his favorite person and she was stroking his ears and telling him what a great hero he was. A dog couldn't ever ask for more. You know, Bando, the old lady continued, even though I've lost my sight, I have no regrets. Mm. Mr. Murthy and I travelled all over India. He showed me the Taj Mahal, we saw the ruins of Hampi and the temples of Tamil Nadu. Just a few months before he died, we groped our way through the Ajanta Caves. Here Mrs. Murthy rubbed a tear off her cheek and Bando moved even closer to her. She was thinking about Mr. Murthy and she was remembering what it was to have had her sight. I consider myself lucky to have seen what many people with sight too may never get a chance to see. Also I had you Bando. All this was making Bando's eyes very watery and he was glad Mrs. Murthy couldn't see his face. If his nose hadn't been black, it would have been a deep red because you know how some of our noses turn red when we are crying. So Bando was having a silent weep next to Mrs. Murthy. But now, my Bando Baba has become a famous cartoonist and I am the only person in the whole of Bangalore who can't see his cartoons. Mrs. Murthy's voice had been getting sadder and sadder and then she blurted, Oh Bando, I'd give anything to be able to see. Bando was in the middle of another bout of silent sobbing. He stopped and cocked one ear up. Anything, Mrs. Murthy continued, even if it was just for one day, she said. Bando couldn't contain himself. He sprang up in excitement and before he knew it, he'd run a couple of circles around the room and come crashing back against Mrs. Murthy's chair. This was the chance he'd been waiting for. All these years, with two legs up on the arms of Mrs. Murthy's chair, he gave the startled old lady a happy lick all over her face before blurting out, Oh, come, Mrs. Murthy, if that's what you want, let's go. Let's go now. Go? Go where to? What are you talking about, Bando? Bando tried his best to be patient and explain to Mrs. Murthy how he'd saved enough money for the best doctors and how he'd waited for months thinking up ways to convince her to see a doctor and why they shouldn't waste any more time. And, you know, Bando, just everything that he had been... Keeping inside him, everything came tumbling out, all together. Without going into the details of all that happened, let's just say that by the next week, Bando was swept into a flurry of activity. Phone calls were made, here letters sent off, there there were appointments to be made and advice to be taken. 
Luckily, Bandu didn't have to worry about his weekly cartoons for some time. The editor had been so thrilled by Bandu's inspired sketches of Anna that he had taken all 50 of them. It was decided that the City Times would run double spreads of Anna for a few consecutive weeks. So Bandu could concentrate on arranging the eye checkups. He was in a terrible hurry because he was scared that the old lady would change her mind. And then he'd be back to square one. So let's watch what happens next time in chapter 12. Bye-bye.